If you're in this business long enough, either as a tech or a musician, you'll probably need to repair or even make an XLR balanced mic cable. So for this video, I thought we would take a look at that. And the first tip is to make yourself an XLR mic cable repair station. Grab a scrap piece of lumber about this size. A two by four or two by six is fine. Get one each of a male and female XLR D series panel mount connector like these. I'll leave links for these in the text below. Drill a couple of seven eighth inch holes in your board. The holes don't even have to go all the way through, but it's okay if they do. You just need the holes deep enough that the connectors will be able to flush mount. Drop the connectors into the holes like this. You want the center pin at the top. That might seem to be upside down, but stick with me. Now take a couple of small wood screws and mount these connectors. XLR pins are numbered. Pin one is always the shield. Then there's pin two and pin three. You want to label these on the XLR repair station like this. You can do it in a hurry with a Sharpie or you could actually use a label maker and do it like this. The important part is that the pin order is clearly marked. No memorizing necessary. This holds your new connector for soldering and gives you easy reference as to which pin is which. We put these in with the center pin at the top because that leaves our solder cup on the XLR connectors facing up for easy soldering. Make sure and add a bit of solder to the XLR contacts. Strip the ends of your cable, leaving about this much jacket. Now let's clean this up a bit. Let's pull the shield back, separate it, and twist it. Cut these strings out of the way. Finally, let's strip these last two conductors with either the 22 gauge or 24 gauge option on the wire strippers. Twist the wires and now pre-tend the wires. You want to heat the wire first and then bring the solder to the work. Do this for each conductor. That's pre-tinning. At this point, I need to mention, before you solder the wires onto the connector, make sure that you put any part of the connector housing onto the cable that you will not be able to put on after the wire is soldered. For a Switchcraft style connector, that is the entire housing of the connector that will have to be on the wire. For a Neutrik type XLR connector, like here, that is just the boot that needs to go on. As I said, pin one is always the shield. So we connect the shield to pin one. In a balanced circuit, pin two is normally the positive connection, but at this point, it doesn't really matter. The cable only cares that you use the same conductor wire on the same pin on each end of the cable. We know the shield is pin one. If pin two is your red wire on the female XLR, then make sure the red wire also connects to pin two on the male end of the cable on the XLR connector. The other conductor is then pin three on both ends of the cable. There's no real rule about color coding here. There's no guarantee what color connects to the other end. Always confirm what color is used on each end of a particular mic cable. Don't assume. You don't want to make a mistake and accidentally flip the polarity. Once everything is soldered, you can go ahead and put the cable ends back on. Once you have the cable put back together, always check your work with a multimeter or a cable tester like this. Here are a couple more videos you might want to check out. Likes, subscribes, and comments are always appreciated. Affiliate links are in the text below, and I will see you next time.